Hi, I'm Chris Thompson, back here at PDAC 2023 for Investor Intel, and today I'm with Peter Clausey, who's the VP Capital Markets of Silver Bullet Mines. Heavy emphasis on the word mines because we're back to mining again. We are. I love PDAC, by the way. Gratuitous shout out. I love this place. So uh, for those who don't know the company, uh, what's going on at the Buckeye property or project in... Uh, in Arizona. As of Friday, we are producing silver. We're not testing, we are producing silver. We are the world's latest silver producer. I can't say that enough. It makes me happy every time I say it. It's taken a while to get here. The weather was against us. We had a foot of snow in Arizona last week, you know, which turned the ground to mud. Uh, the shipping, the port at Long Beach lost our booth for 70 days. We had rains, we had winds, but we are in production. And it just, it's a wonderful sentence to be able to say. So you've had some recent uh, news releases uh, about some, uh, I guess, some sampling you've done at, and some drifts, yep. uh, some assays. So at, one drift. One drift, sorry, one drift. Some assays, pretty spectacular uh, numbers. Uh, why yes. don't you just talk about the, the, why don't you talk about the low grade numbers before you talk about the high grade numbers? Well, the low grade numbers were coming out, I think at five ounces per ton, and those were off the drill clippings. So what we've done is there's a place called the treasure room, which is empty, but we haven't shored it up yet, so we're not putting anybody in there. From historical reports, we thought there was going to be a higher grade area over here, so that's where we've been drifting to. We thought the higher grade area would be here. We seem to have hit it here, uh, because apart from the drill clipping numbers, which, as you point out, are five ounces per ton, still pretty good, the uh, higher grade number was 270 ounces per ton. When one considers that Bonanza Silver, according to common wisdom, starts at 30 ounces a ton, having 270 and 250 and 260 are wonderful numbers. That type of rock must almost be like pure silver. We put a picture of it up on our Twitter feed. There's a thin line of host rock, a big slab of silver, and a thin grade of host rock. Now, remind the viewers again, the mill you put it into, uh, you constructed last year, uh, yes. how, what is it rated for? It's plated 125 tons a day. So when I do my math, I count on 100 tons a day because things happen. And, and so the, on the mining side, how much ore is being, is being mined at the mine these days? Uh, first off, the OSC won't let us call it ore. Okay, Because sorry, we don't rock. have a 43101. Gotcha. So it's mineralized material. Mineralized material. If you say potato, I'll say mineralized material. Okay. Um, there is about 750 tons of the higher grade material at the mine site ready for shipping. There's some of the lower grade material at the mill site. I don't know how much. And you are processing that these days? Yep. Just fine, just fine tuning the lower, with the lower grade material. Then we process the high grade stuff. And we would never have gotten here if it weren't for Dr. McGregor at the Univer Laurentian University Hartwell School of Mining. We had a problem with the mineralogy. We couldn't figure out. Dr. Uh, McGregor figured it out a very simple solution involving a magnet. So thank you, Laurentian University, for getting it right for us. And for those interested, if you look on the website, the difference, you, there's a, you gave a photo of the ingot that was... The, the, yeah, the Dore board that was is awful, right? Yeah. Uh, and that was a problem you had last year that you think you've resolved and... Yeah, in and, September. And the photo from a new, recent news release had a, a, a more properly formed... Yeah, a more recent Dore bar after we installed Laurentian University's solution. And so, with production happening this year, uh, what about sales? What are you doing with the silver once it's produced? We've had, we have one order for 50 kilograms, which we can up to 500 kilograms on, short, on one week's notice. But we've had numerous inquiries. Uh, I don't anticipate a problem selling the silver. Uh, I've been at the show for a couple of days now, have seen a couple of presentations on silver and silver coins, and it seems to be there is more demand for silver coins than there is supply, so I can see that. Yeah, um, whether it be a smelter or a refinery or a mint, I don't anticipate encountering problems in selling the material. So if you're selling material, that's revenue, that means cash flow. You, know, you probably never have profits, because once you have cash flow, you decide how you're gonna allocate that cash, yeah. reinvest in the properties, upgrade the mill, expand the mill, but our goal is cash flow. Talking about the properties in and around the mine, uh, what are you doing there? As a, until we're into cash flow, nothing. 
We are laser focused on cash flow from the mill site. But what potential do you see? Oh, there's, oh my God, there was a new gold find yes. about a month ago. Um, we're trying to put that out of our mind because it's so exciting. You don't want the geologic team drifting over for a look, yeah. right? Focused on the mill, produce me some silver. Uh, but we, there's, it's a massive property called the Black Diamond. There are numerous past producing mines on it, whether registered or artisanal. Um, and there appear to be discoveries waiting for us to find everywhere. Plus we have the mine up in Idaho that as soon as the snow clears out, we'll get that into production. That was my next question. So the Washington, the old Washington mine in Idaho, Yep. Uh, what's going to be planned for 2023 there? Well, first off, we're hoping Mother Nature's nice to us <laughs> because they had, as of December, 160% of last year's snowfall already. So very deep. Uh, our problem isn't clearing the snow, it's we have nowhere left to put it. You can't just plow it out to the highway and leave it there. So we're going to wait for spring melt and make decisions then. And hopefully the cash flow from the mine will help fund some exploration there perhaps? Perhaps, but my anticipation is that once we're into regular production, we'll begin negotiating offtake agreements with producers, with a variety of companies around the world, and that then solves that problem. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Peter. It's Chris Thompson for Investor Intel, and today I was with here with Peter Clausey from Silver Bullet Mines.